number of years ago, a gentleman by the name of Larry Dahlberg came out with a DVD about fishing for bass and panfish. And he had a number of flies on that that uh, he taught you how to tie. And one of them was this fly here. It's called a black gnat. This is not to be confused with the very popular black gnat dry fly or subsurface fly that is often fished for trout. I started tying this fly up and fishing it back when that DVD came out and have had great success with it and, and a lot of fun with this fly ever since. It's a real basic fly to tie. It's kind of like a woolly bugger, uses rabbit instead of marabou in the tail, and we're not palmering the hackle along the body, we're just making a collar. The version that we're tying today has some weight to it to help it get down a little bit, but you can certainly tie this without any weight at all. It's a fun fly to experiment with and try different variations to see what works for you. That's the black gnat, and we'll go ahead and get started. We'll start the black gnat by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 9672 number 10 hook. You could use a heavier wire hook, say a 3906B, if you wanted to. With a hook in the vise, I'll go ahead and debarb the hook. Using a 0 0.015 diameter lead wire, add about 10 or 12 wraps of lead to the hook shank to add some weight to the fly. You want to put those wraps right in the center and squeeze them all together so that they're nice and compact in the center of the hook shank. Next we'll attach our thread right behind the eye of the hook. We're using a uni thread 80 in red. We'll wind the thread down to the lead wraps and then reach to the back side of the lead wraps and continue wrapping to secure the lead in place. You want to build a thread dam on the back side of the lead as well as in front of the lead and this will help keep the lead in place while this fly is fished right in the center of the hook shank. It also provides a nice transition from the larger diameter lead wraps to the narrower diameter hook shank when we're winding on our body material. Once you have the lead secured, you want to advance your thread down the end of the hook shank and it should be hanging just about at the barb of the hook. For the tail on the black gnat, we're going to use some red rabbit fur. If you don't have any red rabbit fur, you could substitute some red marabou for the tail. You want to cut a chunk of red rabbit fur right off the hide. If you don't have a whole skin, a red rabbit zonker will do fine. Just cut a comparable chunk of fur off of the zonker strip. You want to pick out any longer guard hairs just so that they're all about the same length. We don't need to clean the underfur out of this. We're going to measure the tail about a shank length long and we're going to tie that in at the end of the shank. Make certain to secure all the rabbit fur to the hook shank so that we have a nice smooth underbody for our chenille. body of the black gnat, 
you'll want to use a medium rayon chenille in a black color. If you don't happen to have any black chenille, you could certainly use some black dubbing. You might notice when you unwind the rayon chenille from the card, that sometimes it gets flattened while it's been sitting on that card. Once you have the tail material secured to the hook shank, you'll want to advance your thread forward to about a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Then after we tie this in, you'll want to make certain to twist that chenille. You can rub your fingers along the twist or you can rub the top and bottom of it with the edge of your scissors. What this will do is fluff out the fibers and make the chenille into a more rounded, more uniform body material for our fly. Once you've finished prepping the chenille, you'll palmer that forward in nice tight touching turns all the way up to the thread where you'll secure it and trim away the waste. Clean up the space right behind the eye of the hook. This will give us a nice level area for palmering our hackle in. For the hackle collar, you could use any hen hackle that you have. You could use a plain black or white hen hackle or even a speckled hen hackle if you like. For this fly, we're gonna be using a grizzly hen neck by Whiting. The feathers on this particular neck are a little bit longer, which is, provides a few more turns of feather and a little bit thicker collar. If you want, you could leave some of the fluff on the feather and wind that into the collar to give it a little bit more body. For this fly, we're not going to. We're gonna strip all the fluff away and just use the main part of the feather. You want to grab the tip of the feather with your hackle pliers, stroke the fibers back away from the tip so that we can cut the excess off and just leave ourselves with a little triangle to tie in the tip of that feather right in front of the body chenille and then we can polymer our collar. Attach your hackle pliers to the stem of the feather, stroking the fibers of the feather rearward so that we don't trap any of those in a forward facing direction. You'll start winding that feather forward. With these longer hackles, you could get anywhere from five to six turns of a hackle for this collar. If you want a full collar, then go ahead and use the whole feather. If not, then just use three or four turns to get the density of the collar that you're looking for. Just take your time with it, working those feather fibers rearward so that none of them get trapped forward and you have a nice uniform collar. When we get as much of the hackle palmered in as we want, we'll secure that with our thread. 
In this case, after a couple of turns, I'm going to stroke all of the fibers back, including the stem of the feather. And then, starting right behind the eye of the hook, I'm going to form the head of the fly. This doesn't have to be large. We're just wanting to clean this up and give a nice transition down to the eye of the hook. Once I have the head finished, I'll put in a four or five turn whip finish. And I can remove my thread. The hackle stem where it's tied in is narrow enough that I can just pop it forward and it'll break off right at the thread wraps. Some head cement on the thread wraps will help protect the thread from the little teeth of panfish. And with that, your black gnat is finished. One thing to note, the length of your collar is determined by the longest fibers on the feather that you're palmering. These are located right before the fluff or even some of the fluff if you choose to leave those on the feather. If you're looking for longer fibers so that you get a little bit more action, a little bit more flowing, then you'll want to go towards the back of the neck and pick a, a feather that has longer fibers. You might have to tie that in further back from the tip so that you only have to palmer three or four times, maybe five times, to get to those longer hackles. But that completes the Dahlberg black gnat. It's a great little fly that's fun to tie, it's fun to fish. You can tie this up in different colors, choose some different rabbit, or maybe even marabou tail, different chenille, different collar, make some weighted, make some without weight, you could even put a bead on the front or a cone on these if you want. Experiment with them, have a little bit of fun. That's the black gnat. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.